Hey guys, Ray from Love the RV and Boat. So I'm back with part three of my SFK battery re review, sunfunkits.com. So I've done an introduction video, and in the last video we did a, a deep dive into their app and also did a capacity benchmark test through their app, which was pretty cool. Uh, this video, I'm going to do a teardown video. We're going to take this all apart and see what components make up the battery. Now this uh, company seemed to start off as kind of a DIY uh, kit maker seller. They would sell the cells and they made their own brackets and things like that. So this is kind of the, their next generation where they're selling pre-built batteries. So they sort of do all the work for you and you know warranty everything like that. So it should be able to come apart very easily because it was built with DIY guys in mind. People who like to build their own batteries. If you go to their website you'll see you can buy all the components to build a battery like this. Usually it's a little bit cheaper than having them do it all but you know if they do it all it's all put together right and it's benchmarked and everything before it's sent out. So I'm going to take it apart. You see the clear plastic lid um, they told me that they only, right now, they send that out to people who are reviewing their batteries or dealers just, you know, for sales floors and stuff like that. But maybe they'll offer it in the future, I'm not sure. But when you when you see this battery that you order, you get kind of a yellowy, opaque lid, just so you know up front. Um, looks like it's really put together with a lot of uh, hex screws. You can see the cover there has uh, four to take off, and I, I can see a lot of them inside, so... I really want to peel back the layers and maybe get one of the cells out so we can have a, a look at it. So pop the top, just four little screws. And the top slid off pretty easy, although there is a, a little rubber gasket right around there. So it does have sort of like a duff, dust proofing, I guess. On the top here, I had to just disconnect this to, to get the lid up like that. So up here we have it's a RS-485 connector port and that's to, to connect into uh, inverters and systems like the Victron system and uh, laptops sort of thing to, to use different software. Um, they do give you a cable to do that. And on one end is the connector, on the other end is a USB connector. There are a few videos on their channel about it. I've never really done anything like that myself, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but something we can maybe explore in the future. Anyway, that's kind of a, a neat feature, communication port. And then down here in the first video I showed you, they had a, an I.O., they call I.O. Uh, control here, where you can control, turn Bluetooth on and off, active balancing for your cells, and then to control the heater, has built-in heating pads. So that's what the wiring coming out of here is. It looks like they wire in negative and positive for supply. And then they have the different wires going to the places they need to be. It's kind of nicely labeled on the battery management system board, the BMS. We see NTC, NTC. So those are little thermistors that uh, pick up different temperatures in the battery. And then there's this power for the RS-485 came out of that slot. And then over here we have balancing leads. One that says UART goes off into this board here, which looks like that's probably the Bluetooth board for connecting the app. A couple little connectors there. So nice wiring. It's all coated with this uh, wire loom, which is nice. And then I can sort of see there's a one of the thermistors there for picking up temperature. And then there's one taped here that goes back to that I.O. board. Anyway, I'm going to unplug that stuff, disconnect the negative lead here, and try to get the, the BMS out. They have nice holders for the, the BMS here, all supported you know, with their own labeling. So kind of leads me to believe they're doing some 3D printing of stuff to make everything a nice tidy package. Like I say, they, they say made in the USA, but the disclaimer is uh, globally and domestically sourced parts. So I imagine some of the stuff is coming out of offshore countries, China, etc. 
like maybe uh, the cells themselves probably aren't made in the USA. Not sure about the BMS, but a lot of the casing and materials to, to put everything together probably is. And then they assemble everything and test it and design it in the USA. There we go, stripped back some of the leads and un undid the BMS. It's held in place by bolt here, the nut, nylock nut, and copper, which is nice. All the little uh, wires are, are routed with nice lead dress through these plastic clips. They're sort of all over the place. That's a nice touch. And then the wires themselves they use for the battery wires are um, 6 gauge 200 Celsius, 600 volt rating. A pair of them, so that's nice. And then the, the BMS was held in place with the uh, six screws. Then basically it just lifts off just like that. And look underneath. Looks like we got some nice uh, connecting bus bars there. Everything is uh, laser welded there, and then there's nylock nuts on each of those, allowing you to uh, service everything. In here, I believe that is the active balancing board. Don't quote me on that yet, but uh, I think that's what that is. And then you can see down here is the heating pad which they have sandwiched between the batteries so i think i'm gonna tear it down enough to get uh, at least one of those cells out they actually give you what looks like a cell puller which also looks like it's been 3d printed with their name on it and they include that's the the wire for the communication port so just have to get this part off and then we can try to get one of those cells out. That's so far every look everything looks very nice. Impressive build. Okay, made fair progress. Got this bracket off and it holds that circuit board there, which looks like the active balancer circuit board. There's a bunch of capacitors on one side and some some solid state components on the other. Once we get that off, it exposes the the four cells. Bus bars look good. They look like they're actually copper. Pretty thick. A little bit of a bend in the middle for flexibility. And a nice touch. They got some heat shrink tubing on there. There is the heating pads between each cell. I think we're going to pull this cell out. You can see there's a hologram SFK and then a hologram of what the cell is. I'll take a picture of that and post it in the video for you. So this cell puller will just go on like that. And then we've got a couple nuts to put on. I should be able to just lift her out. So, very easy with that puller. There is your... Uh, cell heating pad it's kind of a rubbery material it just kind of sticks to the cell so it wouldn't be very hard to uh, change a cell so it looks good don't see any bulging or discoloring i don't see any names on it at all actually i see a name on the other cell so maybe there's a name behind there oh yeah the label's behind so let's pull this out of the way and we'll get a look at that uh, second cell see what kind of label they have on it there we go we got a full label certified automotive grade lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell model number serial number date looks like they're eve eve energy limited date of manufacture case id some qr codes so that's nice. Usually you get the battery and you're trying to look up a cell and you're trying to mess around with the little QR code and the, the, try to decode the number on it. So it's got a nice label right on it so you know exactly what you need if you need to replace one of these cells. OK, 
Okay, put that section back together. Let's just have a look, closer look at the BMS board here. We got Sunfun Kits 200 amp BMS Max 4S connection, 48 volts. C minus to case lid, B minus to battery terminal, and then their website link. Well, Q quality passes there. This pretty decent heat sink on the top and then a big huge thick one on the bottom. So quite a robust BMS, especially considering it's only 200 amp max. But they tell me one of the limitations as far as discharge current goes comes from having such a small case. It's so tightly packed in there. So they have to limit the the output current so that the battery doesn't overheat so it's kind of a price you pay for a smaller form factor still it uh, has pretty decent uh, continuous just discharge rate if you needed more you'd have to you know parallel two together well got it all back together no extra parts left over which is always a good thing it seems to be charging and discharging fine app seems to be working so no harm done I um, hope you found that helpful if you're considering one of these batteries and I'll continue testing it in a little test bed here and uh, have some more videos in the future. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers everyone.